But this election is about our future. Political debates were once the pinnacle of an election where thousands would tune in to hear what each candidate had to say. Here in Louisiana, they have always been eye-catching. Famous ones in 1991 with a stage full of candidates versus David Duke. Um, we draw a lot of attention for our debates, and they're always splashy and exciting. A growing trend has led to candidates, especially incumbents, to turning away from the podium. It is met with criticism by the media, the underdog candidates, and even some indifference from voters. For those who put on these debates, it brings concerns for democracy. So they have to make sure they understand what those candidates stand for, and that they like their temperament, do they like how they approach things, and you don't really see that in scripted events as much. Barry Irwin, also with the Council for a Better Louisiana, added that when a candidate used to turn down a debate, it would look like they were running away. He says with the general mistrust of the media by both politicians and voters, there's less call for these televised debates. How can the people of Louisiana trust you? Some forums go so far as leaving an empty chair for a candidate who decided not to come. They're often overshadowed by the idea that the front runner or the guy who thinks he's the front runner chooses not to show up. There are a number of reasons why a candidate would be advised against a debate, and a lot of it has evolved around social media and how polling can be more precise. I really think the downfall of debates has been data. Um, and because candidates with proper campaign apparatus can now find and ID their individual voters that they have to get, the debate method, which is going to reach a whole lot of people, not just the intended target audience, is a bit too risky. Campaigns can target very specific voters with mailers, ads, and calls with their controlled message. They're not putting their candidates out there uh, necessarily to um, convince voters who might not otherwise vote for them for their support. I mean, what modern campaigns are about are about mobilizing people who are already predisposed to vote for them. Ray points out that less people are turning into televised debates live. Most often they will see a wrap up or a brief coverage of it later. And the concern for some candidates is that quotes can be taken out of context or whoever's the most snappy gets the most attention. It's time to get someone that's not a career politician to move our state forward. For those who may have smaller budgets and less name recognition, debates can launch launch them into the spotlight without spending the big bucks. That you can show them what you want them to see from the debate, and that includes the gaffes and mistakes of your opponent. But what does this really mean for voters? While debates are well prepared for by candidates and there are lines that they come with tucked into their pockets, what about the candid responses? Debates are unique in the sense that that's where you actually have opposition, and that gives you a not a complete sense, but a better sense of how that person might perform when they have to deal with people that disagree with them. Not having ability to uh, ask incumbents um, hard questions uh, that 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 seek to get at that answers that voters are concerned about um, that that makes incumbents much more powerful and, and difficult to defeat. When elections are more closely polling or an open race, such as the gubernatorial election next year, debates are expected and much desired. For incumbent races, it'll be up to the voters who want to see debates to make it known. For your local election headquarters, I'm Shannon Hacked.